My names are Mr. Isaac Abdurrahman. I am a biology teacher at one of the schools in Kenya. Today we are going to look at one of the sense organs, the human ear. The main function of the human ear is hearing and it's also responsible for body balance. So it has the structures which is responsible for balancing the body. So the role of the ear in the human body is hearing and maintaining balance and posture. The ear is divided into three regions. The outer region, the middle region, and the inner region. The outer ear is made up of the pinna, this is the pinna, and the external auditory meters. The pinna is a flap of skin made of cartilage. Its main role is to collect and concentrates the sound waves to the external auditory meters. The external auditory meters is this passage that leads the sound waves into the tympanic membrane. The external auditory meters has the adaptation. How is it adapted to its function? Within the linings of the external uh, auditory meters, it has secretory cells. The secretory cells that secretes wax. The wax traps the, the dust and solid particles and protect it, prevent it from reaching the tympanic membrane. Another role of the wax is it increases the flexibility of the eardrum. So this is a tube that leads the sound waves into the tympanic membrane. And the middle, the middle ear is made up of the membrane called tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane is, covers the opening of the middle ear. It is made up of double layers of epidermis with connective tissues in between the two layers. The middle layer is air-filled cavities. So the main role of the tympanic membrane is to change the sound waves into vibrations. It detects the sound waves and the sound waves are changed into vibrations. And lying next to the tympanic membrane are three bones, the ear ossicles. This one is called the malleus. The first one is the malleus, the incus, and the steppers. This one is external auditory meters. This is the malleus, this is the incus, and this is the steppers. There are three bones that lie adjacent to each other and the vibrations from the tympanic membrane is picked up by the first ossicle, the malleus, and then it's in turn picked up by the incus and then the third bone, the stepus. What is the role of these ossicles? The main role of these three bones, the ear ossicles, which makes up a portion or a part of the middle ear, which makes up a portion of the middle ears. The main role is amplifications. 
it amplifies the vibrations from the tympanic membrane which reaches the ear ossicles. These bones themselves, they are suspended in sets of muscles. These bones are suspended in the sets of muscles. The role of these muscles is to prevent excessive vibration that might damage the tympanic membrane or the eardrum. And next to it, we have got two bones. Here we have got what is called the oval window. And here we have got the round window. And here we have the tube which connects the middle ear to the pharynx. It's called the Eustachian tube. The main role of the Eustachian tube is to equalize the air pressure between the middle ear and outside the ear. Like, for instance, when you move up higher altitude, the atmospheric pressure drops. It drops than the pressure of the middle ear. This brings about bulging outwards of the ear, which leads to temporary blockage of the ear, a phenomenon corrected with swallowing or yawning. So the main role of the Eustachian tube, which connects the middle ear to the pharynx, is to balance the air pressure between the middle ear and outside. Then the next part is we have got this one calls the semicircular canal. And then we have got the vestibules. And we have cochlea. The semicircular canal and the vestibules and the cochlea make up, makes up the inner ear. The semicircular canal, the tube embedded in the skull, the cavities and membranes which are embedded in the skull whose main function within the ear is the semicircular canal is responsible for maintaining the body balance and posture. The semicircular canal and the vestibules are responsible for balancing the body. And then we have the cochlea. This is the structure which is responsible for hearing. This is the structure which is responsible for hearing. It has the adaptations. It is highly coiled to increase the surface area for the muscle attachment. It has sensory cells which generates nerve impulse, and it has a fluid which is called endolymph, which, which transmits the vibrations. So here we have got the endolymph. That is the fluid within the cochlea, and then the perilymph. The main role of these fluids, its movements and displacements transmits the vibrations and also it takes part in balancing the body, which we are going to see later. So like we said that the ear is made up of uh, three regions. The outer region made up of pina, whose main role is to concentrate, collect and concentrate the sound waves into the external auditory meters which is a tube that leads to the tympanic membrane. Its adaptation is it has the secretory cells 
and it has hairs which normally traps uh, dust particles and the wax which is secreted by these secretory cells is to increase the flexibility of the eardrum and it increases the flexibility of the eardrum and uh, to prevent or to trap the solid particles which may damage the tympanic membrane. The tympanic membrane main role is that when it is hit by the sound waves, it changes the sound waves into vibrations. And then next to the tympanic membrane are the three bones called the ear ossicles, whose main role is to amplify the vibrations. And then we have got the windows, which is called the round window and the oval window, which connects the middle ear to the inner ear. And then we have got the semicircular canals and the vestibules, which is the structure responsible for maintaining body balance and posture. And then the cochlea, which is responsible for hearing. Now let's start the process of hearing. When the sound waves is produced, the sound waves is collected by the pinna. The sound wave is collected by the pinna. It's concentrated and then it is sent to the external auditory meters. And when the sound waves hits the tympanic membrane, the tympanic membrane changes the sound waves into vibration. It starts to vibrate. The vibration is picked up by the ossicles for amplification. And then the vibration is sent to the cochlea through the oval window. So what happens when the vibrations reach the cochlea? So once the vibrations are transmitted by the endolymph, the fluid found within the membranes of the cochlea, the sensory cells, which lies within the membranes of the cochlea, are stimulated. The sensory cells contain the sensory hairs. So it starts to stimulate. The stimulation of the sensory hairs within the cochlea leads to generation of nerve impulses. And once the nerve impulses are generated, they are picked up, those impulses are picked up by the nerves, called the auditory nerves. The impulses from the cochlea is picked up, are picked up by the auditory nerve and then relayed to the brain. Specifically, which part of the brain? The cerebrum for interpretation. Cerebrum is a structure found at the forebrain, which is responsible for receiving an impulse for hearing, sight, and the test. So it is take, the auditory nerve carries the impulse to the cerebrum for interpretation. And then once the sound is interpreted, it's perceived, and the response and the, the results of the interpretation is relayed to the effectors as a response. We have come to the end of our lesson. I wish you all the best and uh, subscribe to our channel for more best tutorial videos by one of the best te teachers in the country. So for more materials, for more lectures, subscribe to our channel. We are going to provide you with one of the best videos and uh, the best uh, lectures. So let's meet in the next, in the next uh, class again. We are going to bring you the best classes. OK.